And joining us now is John Street with Campus Reform, a conservative watchdog to the nation's higher education system. Welcome, John. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Sure. Well, Young Life is saying they don't restrict who could attend their meetings. They're saying that they're restricting, they're only restricting people who uh, engage in sexual misconduct or who practice a homosexual lifestyle from being on staff or leadership positions. Why is that not enough for the university? Well, what we're seeing here is a clear-cut case of religious persecution on campus, plain and simple. And we see this time and time again throughout the college campus all over the country. We saw in uh, in University of Iowa a very similar case just a few months ago where Business Leaders in Christ was told that they wouldn't be an officially recognized student organization because they held traditional views on marriage. And they took that case to uh, courts and they won uh, and, you know, here we're, we've talked, we've been in touch with the, the student organization at Duke, Young Life. They said that they don't uh, plan on appealing this decision, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I, you know I, I think that Duke would do well to step in here and say enough is enough, whether you like the viewpoints of someone or think, find them offensive or not, they're still protected under the U.S. Constitution, and we, we need to respect those views of others. Groups require their staff and leaders to ascribe to the group's beliefs. The College Democrats, for example, wouldn't allow a Republican to be their group's president. How is Young Life any different? Well, it's not. And, you know, you wouldn't expect for a group to have a leader, any of its leaders, who don't adhere to that group's founding principles or to that group's beliefs. Just like you wouldn't expect a, uh, you know, a group that is of Jewish students to not uphold Jewish beliefs or a Muslim student association not to adhere to, you know, to Muslim beliefs. You're not going to expect, you know, a Christian organization like Young Life to have students who don't believe in uh, fundamental Christian values. It just doesn't make sense. Just like you said, you wouldn't have a Democrat leading the college Republicans group, and you wouldn't have a Republican leading the college Democrats group. It just doesn't make sense. Or someone who doesn't believe in the word of God leading this, you know, Young Life group, which is all about Christianity. Okay, well, another Christian group, InterVarsity, has taken the University of Iowa to court over this issue. Do you think this fight will ultimately lead to the U.S. Supreme Court? I mean, look, we've seen this time and time again at the Leadership Institute's campus reform, where, you know, student organizations are not recognized. They lose recognition, uh, they lose registered status at public universities and private universities. Uh, simply because their views are not in line with what the university or the student government uh, deems to be inclusive enough or um, or they, they, they deem those views to be offensive. And what we're seeing here is the left-wing mob deciding what is offensive and what is not. And that's a very, very dangerous, uh, slippery slope to go down where we have a small minority uh, group of people deciding what can what abuse can be expressed and which ones can't that's not what our uh, constitution was founded upon and that's not what we should tolerate here all right john street with campus reform thanks so much for being with us today thank you so much for having